Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I want to talk about blogging as a software developer. Now you may have thought about starting a blog or you may already have a blog, but you haven't written anything in the last six months. You know who you are. Given we now have things like ChatGPT, which is capable of writing whole blog posts about anything you can think about, is it even worth pursuing a blog? At the end of this video, I'm gonna cover how much traffic my blog is getting, as well as how much money I'm making from it. So make sure you stay around for that. So the main reason that I have my own blog is to have my own slice of the internet that's 100% mine. It's my own space where I can write about anything that I want and no one can take that away from me. I don't have to cater towards algorithms or worry that people are gonna unsubscribe if I talk about something that's slightly off topic. There's obviously a lot of content about software development on my blog, but I also write about philosophy, entrepreneurship, finance, productivity, and mental health as well. Anything goes. It's my home on the internet. Everything that I write, whether it be my newsletter or scripts for these videos, they all go onto my website, so they're all in one place. I also like to write notes on the books that I read so that I can actually remember and understand the things that I've read. Even though these notes are mostly for my benefit, other people can read them as well, which gives them a chance to understand what a book is about before they choose to read it themselves. As a developer, blogging is a great way to share your knowledge. There's so much to learn in software development that even if you're a beginner, I can guarantee that there's something that you know that even the top software developers don't know. Some people like to hoard their knowledge and keep it all to themselves, but in my experience, it's always better to share what you know. You will find if you're open to sharing your knowledge and helping other people, it will always come back to you in a number of different ways. Whether you call it karma or attracting luck, helping other people is always gonna be a winning strategy. I've also found that I think a lot clearer when I write things down. I'm not a great public speaker. This talking to the camera doesn't come naturally to me. So I have to write down most of what I'm gonna say in my videos, if not word for word. If I tried to just record a video with without any preparation, then I'd probably forget what I wanted to say and there would be a lot of ums and ahs as well. In fact, if you watch some of my older videos where I didn't plan out what I was going to say, there's so many ums and ahs that you could actually make a very good drinking game out of it. I also find the process of explaining something to someone else is a great way to help you understand a topic better. It's easier to see the gaps in your knowledge and it will make you a better programmer as a result. Blogging and writing on the internet is a great way to build a personal brand. Now, I don't really like the term personal brand. It sounds like I'm commercializing myself. And in some cases, that is what people are trying to do. However, for me, it's more about showing people what I'm about. Whether you're applying for a job or going on a date, people are going to Google you. If I search for my name on Google, the top five results are my website, my YouTube channel, my LinkedIn profile, my Twitter page, and my Facebook page. Believe it or not, I'm not the only Alex Hyatt in the world, and some of the results on the first page of Google are actually for other people. But by dominating the first half of the results on Google for my own name, there's a high chance that someone's gonna find my stuff as opposed to someone else's. If I'm applying for a job, they'll see that I write articles and do videos about software development. Now imagine if I didn't have a website or a YouTube channel, then a prospective employer could search my name on Google and find one of the other Alex's and think it was me. I believe one of the other Alex Hyatt's is a DJ, which is great, but it's not gonna help me get a job as a software developer. Unlike some people, I'm not gonna tell you that you must have a blog. I know plenty of highly successful, well-paid software developers who don't have a blog, they don't have a basic website, and they don't even have a GitHub account. I have a blog and a newsletter and a YouTube channel because I enjoy writing and I enjoy helping others. I really want to help you be a better software developer and get the most out of your career in tech. Everything else is really just an added bonus. If I apply for a development job, then yes, maybe my writing will help, but the chances are it will go to the candidate with more experience rather than the one that writes a lot. I've been blogging for around eight years now, but it's only really in the last six months that I've been consistent and I've started seeing traction on my blog. Blogging is a huge time commitment. It can take several hours to write a decent blog post, or even more if you've got to include code examples as well. If you have a full-time job, it can be difficult to find the time to blog, especially if you have a family or other commitments outside of work. In fact, when I started a new job in 2019, I didn't write any blog posts for the entire year. And actually in the last six months, I've written more blog posts than I have in my entire time that I've been blogging. So the moment you've been waiting for, how much traffic and how much money do I actually make for my blog? Today, my blog gets around 16,000 page views a month. Now that's not a huge amount. I know some bloggers who get hundreds of thousands of page views a month. However, traffic is increasing month after month now that I'm writing consistently. In fact, for the last three months, my page views have increased by 3,000 views each month, which I think is pretty good. If it does continue at this rate, then I may well be on nearer 30,000 views a month by the end of the year. Some of that traffic is of course coming from YouTube, but most of it is coming from Google. 
Over the years, I've tried to learn more and more about SEO and keyword research, and it looks like that is finally paying off. However, if Google does decide to change their search engine in favor of an AI chatbot, then I may find that my traffic will suddenly drop drastically. I'll still continue writing because I enjoy doing it, even if it means not so many people see my posts. So how much do I earn from my blog? Well, the income from my blog is in three main places. The first is ad revenue. I used to use Google AdSense on my blog, but I only made around three cents a day. I could have made a lot more if I filled my blog with lots and lots of adverts, but I really didn't like how it looked. Given it's mostly developers that go on my blog, we're pretty good at ignoring adverts or blocking them completely. I now use ethical ads, which is made for developers. But the main reason for choosing them is because they're more privacy focused. They don't spy on the visitors like the other ad networks tend to do. I also only have to show one advert, which is at least relevant to the people visiting my website. Some of the adverts that get shown are also for non-profit projects as well, which obviously I don't get any money for, but at least it's for a good cause. So last month with 16,000 page views, I got $14.46 which isn't a great amount. And because I only started using this ad network in February, I haven't yet received a payout because I haven't reached the payout threshold of $50. This would be higher, but of course a lot of developers use ad blocking tools. So only around 10,000 of those views are counted. I also have a lot of traffic from India. Hi, anyone from India who's watching, but unfortunately it doesn't pay as much as say traffic from the United States. If you want to try ethical ads, I'll include a link in the description below. This isn't sponsored in any way. I don't get any money if you sign up. You will also need over 10,000 page views a month in order to be eligible. For those using the Brave browser, I also signed up for their rewards program and they send me around 60p, which is around 75 cents a month. On top of the ad revenue, I occasionally add affiliate links as well to the books that I've read or the products that I've used. I mostly use the Amazon affiliate program to link to the books that I've read. You'll see in the description below, I've linked to a few books that have helped me in the past. Generally, I make around $10 a month from Amazon affiliates, but some of this will be from people clicking on links on my YouTube videos and not just on my blog. It's not a great amount, but every little helps. The last place that I get money from my blog is from donations. At the end of my blog posts, I include a link to my Buy Me A Coffee page where people can donate money if they found my posts helpful. In the last three years, I've had three people buy me a coffee from that page, so thank you to those people if they're watching. That amounts to around £12 or $15 in total. So in total, my blog is earning me around $25 a month, which isn't a great deal, but considering I'd write my blog anyway, it's a nice little addition. I could of course increase my earnings by filling my blog with adverts, promoting more products or putting an affiliate link on every single page, but that doesn't really sit right with me. If I haven't used a product, I don't feel right personally promoting it to my audience. Even though my website doesn't make much money at the moment, it does help people find my YouTube channel and my newsletter, which might make me some money in the future. I would also like to make courses and write some books and my website is going to be useful to help people find those as well. If you still aren't deterred by the lack of income and you want to start your own blog, there are a number of ways that you can do that. If I was smart, this is where I'd start plugging a really expensive blogging platform where I'd earn a commission, but I'm not going to do that. There's lots of free blogging platforms out there and there's ones that are specifically designed for developers like Hashnode and Dev.2. These are a great way to get started with writing online and they do increase your chances of your blog posts actually being read. I would recommend though blogging on your own domain, otherwise you're just going to be driving traffic to someone else's website. Hashnode offers this, as does Medium, but with Medium you have to pay for their Medium subscription to be able to use that feature. Ghost is another option, or you can pay for their cloud hosting platform. If you do sign up for their hosting, it also doubles as a newsletter, but it can get really expensive if you have lots and lots of subscribers. Another option is Substack, which is a newsletter and blogging platform. It is completely free, they support custom domains, and they also have a built-in discovery network as well. I use Substack for my own newsletter and it's been really good so far. The other option is to have your own custom website, either by hosting your own blogging platform like WordPress or Ghost, or going down the static site route and using things like Hugo, Jekyll or Gatsby. This is the route I have taken. I have a slightly complicated setup with a Gatsby website hosted on AWS 3 and then I use Strapi as the CMS in the back end. Personally, I wouldn't go down this route to start with. One of the reasons why I didn't blog much in the early years was because I was spending too much time customizing my website and trying to get it to look how I wanted it and not enough time actually doing the writing. On top of that, you have to worry about performance and SEO, and these things can take quite a long time to get right. The main benefit of going down the static site route is it's one of the cheapest options if you want to self-host. You can host your website for free on GitHub Pages, or you can do what I do and host it on AWS. My AWS bill is only 50 cents a month, and that is really only for the Route 53 hosted zone. With a static website, you also don't need to worry about traffic spikes too much, because there's no database in the back end that could go down. 
When one of my posts went on the front page of Hacker News, I got 10,000 people on my website in a very short period of time, and my website held up fine. If you have your own website, but you're not getting any traffic, and you want more people to read your posts, then you can cross post them to places like Hashnode, Dev.2 and Medium. It's important if you do this that you also set up a canonical link which points back to your website. Otherwise, Google might rank their version over yours or they'll mark it as duplicate content. Dev.2 has been especially good and I've had thousands of people read my posts from cross-posting on their platform. Whichever platform you choose, I would recommend also trying to build an email list at the same time. Having a large following on social media or these other platforms is great, but you don't control the algorithms. You can't guarantee that someone's going to see their posts, even if they love your content. And of course, there's always a chance that the platform could kick you off and you'd lose the audience that you spent ages building up. I can see from my newsletter stats that 40 to 45% of the people that are subscribed open and read my newsletter. That's a much higher percentage than the number of people that are subscribed to my YouTube channel and also watch my videos. You don't need a massive following if you have a decent email list. You definitely don't need a blog as a software developer, but it can be a fun hobby and it has a few added benefits on top. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you in the next video.